Now here we have a band limited signal, so it's band limited to 4 kilohertz, but then it's further band limited by passing through a low pass filter with a bandwidth of 3 kilohertz. And then we sample the output of that filter at 6 kilohertz. Now 6 kilohertz just happens to be twice 3 kilohertz, and that's why we call it an anti-aliasing filter. And we'll see that in a little bit more detail now. So the question is, how much of the original spectrum can we recover? So that's after sampling, we want to recover our signal. So let's look at what the filter will do. The filter, because it has a 3 kilohertz um, band pass, it will only allow signals between minus 3 and 3 kilohertz to pass. Or really, we should say between 0 and 3 kilohertz to pass. So this is the output of our filter. The, um, the remainder from 3 to 4 kilohertz, that is removed by the low pass filter. Okay, so this is the output of the low pass filter. So this is all before sampling. When we sample, we need to create replicas of this signal. So I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to do this like that. So I'll duplicate that and our replicas sit at multiples of the sample rate. So the sample rate is six kilohertz. So my replicas should sit at six, 12, 18, etc. Minus 6, minus 12, minus 18. So these replicas um, continue for infinity in both directions. So these are my replicas and they're caused by sampling. But you'll notice this time there's no aliasing because what we have is critical sampling. Critical sampling is what we sometimes refer to as Nyquist sampling. That is sampling at exactly the sample rate. So here our sample rate is 6 kilohertz and the signal bandwidth after filtering was 3 kilohertz. So this is twice the bandwidth, which is the Nyquist rate. Okay, hence Nyquist sampling. So we've actually prevented aliasing. That's why it's called an anti-aliasing filter. We've prevented aliasing by using this low pass filter. So um, an anti-aliasing filter applied before sampling allows more signal to be recovered than an anti-aliasing filter applied after sampling. Now to answer the question, how much of the signal has been recovered? Well, we said the bandwidth is um, 3 and the original bandwidth was 4. So how much have we recovered? So the recovered bandwidth is 3 kilohertz because we could apply a low-pass filter at the receiver. Um, let's do it in yellow. We could apply a low-pass filter, an ideal low-pass filter at the receiver that would recover our original message or at least 3 kilohertz of our original message. So this could all be recovered. Okay. So the recovered bandwidth is 3 kilohertz and compared to my original of 4 kilohertz that's 75 percent. So that would be my final answer or you could say 3 kilohertz depending on how the question was phrased.